Hi, I'm Dustin Gibson with OPTCorp.com. One of the questions our imaging specialists get asked daily is, do I need a color sensor or a monochrome sensor for astroimaging? Both have their benefits and both have their drawbacks. When you're thinking about sensors, you really need to kind of think of it as the net you're going to use to catch this light. And if you take, for instance, the Andromeda Galaxy, right, this light has been traveling for trillions of miles and millions of years to get to you, and there's not a lot of it that it's not like looking around and taking a picture out in your backyard or, or of a city. Right? You're taking a picture into a spot that's relatively dark in space, and you're having to do long exposures to capture that light. And so when we're looking at the sensors, these are the sensors behind me, you have an RGGB pattern on the color sensor that's red, green, green, blue. And these are literally filters over every single pixel that's going to capture a specific wavelength of light. And so when you see a green filter on it, that's going to keep everything out except for the green light. Same thing with red and blue. This doesn't happen on the monochrome sensor. So anything that hits, it just registers as, we saw light. That was it. You just caught the light, that's it. So with the color sensor, what can end up happening is if red light hits the blue pixel or the green pixel, it gets rejected. It can't get through, and so it doesn't get captured. And when you're looking into space, if you're looking at the Andromeda Galaxy, the color you're probably not going to see a lot of is green mostly going to see red and blue. And this is okay, except for the fact that half of the pixels are covered in green filters. This is perfect when you're shooting out and you're shooting landscapes and things like that, but it's not so good when you're shooting into space. So generally, half your data right off the top is going to get cut. And a lot of times when you consider, you know, red light isn't always going to find the red filter, and the same thing with blue, you're going to lose even more than that. So a lot of times it can be 75, 80% of the data gone. With a monochrome sensor, you're going to capture as much light as your quantum efficiency of your sensor allows, which is just basically if 100 hit and your quantum efficiency is 70, you're going to catch 70. It's just the easier way to think about it. And so with these sensors anyway, and the reason that I chose monochrome as you can see then, you're catching a lot more, generally 80% more of the light, and you're also going to have more control because you're choosing which filter goes over the entire sensor. So you can capture red independently, then green, then blue, stack them on top and get the same type of color image. You can just get the data a lot more quickly that way. And with a monochrome sensor, you can also use filters that are highly specialized to capture very specific wavelengths. And that's the real benefit, in my opinion, because you can now capture light from cities, whereas with a color sensor, you may not be able to, because you're going to pick up all of the noise in the image. With signal being your target and noise being everything else, including the light pollution, you have to think when you're taking a long exposure, those street lamps and the cars driving by are all now going to be part of your image. With a monochrome sensor and with a narrowband filter attached, like hydrogen alpha, you may have seen that, it's just going to let through that wavelength that isn't going to capture the light from the street lamp or the light from the car passing by. And so you have a lot of control, a lot more control of exactly what's getting through to your camera sensor. And it really doesn't mean that you're getting a better picture. A lot of times with color sensors, you're going to have to shoot more, uh, more subs of the frame to get the same data with, with less noise in the image, but um, it doesn't mean you can't get great data. I've seen it done both ways. I've seen fantastic, some of the best images I've ever seen were shot with one-shot color cameras. They're just usually shot from very dark skies, somewhere maybe in the desert or on top of a mountain, right? Whereas with a monochrome sensor, I do most of my shooting from cities. I've shot from downtown Nashville and from downtown Oceanside. Um, and it really doesn't change that much because I can put those narrowband filters on there and cut out the light around me and go after just what it is that I'm looking for. And for me, a monochrome sensor was right. Uh, for most imagers, we find that eventually they end up with monochrome sensors because of the freedom that it gives you to control your images. But I still have to say there's a real draw for me, too, of just the simplicity of a color camera. You can take it out in like a DSLR, the one we're shooting this video with, and um, you know, just a Canon or Nikon you may have at home. You can 
throw that on your telescope, take a picture, and instantly see it in color. And there's a lot to be said for that, especially if you have skies or you have access to skies that are going to be a lot, you know, a lot less light pollution and they're going to be darker skies. Then you may want a color, a color camera just because of the simplicity. And when you go to edit those photos, you're just stacking the frames that are all taken the same way, just a lot of them stacked to get rid of the noise and you have a very simple process to get your image. It's not like having to have a filter wheel and the filters, which are all added cost of a monochrome camera, to get to the same thing where you have a color image. And so, on the cost side of things, color absolutely wins. On the data side of things, generally, monochrome sensors are going to win. So it's really kind of this balancing act that you have to figure out which one better suits your style and your location and, um, you know, and your budget. To, to figure out which one of these is going to work for you. You can get fantastic data either way. You can see the, the images I've shot at everyclearnight.com with monochrome sensors, um, but there's no wrong answer here. They're both fantastic options and getting out and shooting is the important thing. So if you have any more questions or more detailed questions, give us a call here at OPT. We can definitely help you out. And uh, just about everyone here, uses these cameras, about half of us are color and the other half is monochrome. So either way you go, you're gonna have someone you can talk to that has a lot of experience with these cameras. Thanks a lot. Hey, this is Steven Hendren from OPT. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you can see, we tried something a little bit different than what we have for other videos. Let us know if you'd like to see more videos like it, and if you have any ideas for a particular subject you'd like to see presented in this style, we'd be uh, open to maybe making some of those. You can let us know down in the comments. If not, let us know that as well, and let us know what types of videos you would like to see instead. I'm certainly interested in knowing what you think, since I designed and drew the little illustrations and graphs and whatnot that you saw throughout the video. Be sure to also like this video and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more stuff like it. And, you know, let us know if you'd like to see some other things too. We also have some links on the screen here for some video tutorials on how to do various forms of image processing. So if you've already taken some pictures that you're looking to process, uh, these videos might help you with that. In the meantime, from all of us at OPT, keep looking up. Mm -hmm.